Hello, I am Miss Anne, and we are going to start out by singing the song, You Are a Wonderful God. Our memory verse is the John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 1. Let's say it together again. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 1. One more time. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 1. Our memory verse is the first verse in chapter 1 of the book of John. Verse 2 tells us again that he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says that he made all things. Verse 4 tells us that in him was life. Verse 9 says he was the true light. 10, that he was in the world and the world didn't know him. And 12 informs us, as many as received him became the children of God, to those that believed on his name. And verse 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus Christ. What does this all mean? First, Jesus was with God in the beginning. He is God. He is the creator of all. He is the true light of the world, and life is in him. Yet he came to a world that did not know him. But anyone who receives him, that means believes that he is the Son of God who loves us very much, thank him for paying for our sins, and ask him to forgive our sins, and ask him to come in and guide our lives, those become the children of God. The Bible is really his story. And that's what Jesus knows of all about everything that's going to happen. His death and resurrection, rising from the dead, were all planned out way in advance so that we could be forgiven of our sins and be with Jesus forever. What a wonderful God we really do have. The very day that Jesus' tomb was found to be empty, two of Jesus' disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus. It was late in the afternoon the first Easter Sunday. Yes, the very day that Jesus came out of the tomb. But these two did not know that Jesus was alive. They thought he was still dead, and they were so very sad. They started walking the seven-mile trip to Emmaus. They were no doubt talking on the way home. Three days before, they had seen Jesus carry his cross, be nailed to the cross, heard the yelling of the angry mob and the wicked men that put Jesus on the cross. There they watched him as he hung on the cross. They heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then they saw Jesus die. They knew his body had been placed in a tomb and a heavy stone rolled in front of the door. If they talked at all, it was probably about what had happened. One might have said something like, Did you think the Lord Jesus was really going to die like that? 
No, said the other. I believed he was really the Son of God and he could do anything. I did not think wicked men would put him on a cross. I don't understand this at all. How could they do such dreadful things to him when he loved us so much? They had been with Jesus all that time, but none of the disciples had understood what Jesus had been telling them. In Matthew 20, 18 and 19, Jesus very plainly says to the disciples, The Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes. They will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. But they didn't get it. Suddenly someone comes near them and starts walking along with Cleopas and his friend. It was the Lord Jesus, but they did not know him. Why? We know they had forgotten the promise that Jesus had made to them that he would rise again. We just read it. Perhaps God did not let them re recognize him so Jesus could teach them something that applies to us. We can know Jesus from reading his word, the Bible. We do not have to see him with our eyes. The Lord Jesus asked them, What are you talking about? Of course, Jesus knew what they were talking about, but he wanted them to tell him. Luke 24, 18, 9, 18 to 24, Cleopas says, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of these things that have happened there in these days? Jesus asked, What things? Of course he knew, but he just wanted them to tell him. And they said, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back saying they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Cleopas goes on. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just like the women had said, but him they did not see. Wow. That's a lot of explaining to uh, the events as they understood them at that time. But Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish one, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Jesus was not angry with them, but he was very anxious for them to understand the things that had, they had seen in Jerusalem in the last few days, had been written in the scriptures long before. It tells us, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. That means he explained all the Old Testament writings that they knew, but did not understand the meaning of. Here are some of the wonderful things which are written in the Old Testament about the Lord Jesus the Son of God, Moses, David in the Psalms, and the prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah and others. We don't know the exact things that Jesus talked about, but we do know the places in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus. The writers of the New Testament remind us of some of these things, and Jesus talked about the brass snake or the serpent himself in John 3 when he was talking to Nicodemus. The first promise of the Savior was written by Moses in Genesis 3:15, as God spoke to Adam and Eve about their sin in the garden. Jesus might have reminded them that Satan would try to destroy the Savior, but one day the Savior would destroy Satan. It says in Genesis 3:15, Today Satan tries to keep people from believing the word of God, but someday God will put Satan in a place of punishment especially prepared for him. Cleopas and his friends had listened to Jesus so many times and seen him work miracles, but now they were learning of Jesus from the Old Testament of God's Word. 
In Numbers 21, we read of a time the Israelite people sinned against God, and God sent fiery serpents among the people. The people confessed their sins, so God told Moses to make a serpent out of bronze and set it on a pole. All who looked at it would live. It tells us, so Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and would live. That was Numbers 21, 9. Jesus applied this to himself in John 3, verses 14 and 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus called himself the Son of Man, so they knew who he meant. Zechariah, one of the other prophets, in chapter 11, verses 12 and 13 say, And they weighed out as my wages 30 pieces of silver. Then the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter. Cleopas no doubt could have remembered how Judas had betrayed Jesus and then thrown the money he received for that act back at the men who gave it to him. They didn't know what to do with the money, so they bought a potter's field. Judas might have been shocked to realize that God knew what he would do years and years before. The friend might have said, do the scriptures tell of the awful treatment that he received? And Jesus could have reminded them of Isaiah 50, verse 6, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. As the men listened, their minds were opened. Now this stranger reminded them of Psalm 22, verses 7 and 8. All who seek me, see me, mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. David, the writer of the psalm, is saying that Jesus' enemies would laugh and make fun of Jesus while he was on the cross. Mark 15, 31 tells us that the people said of Jesus, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. They had heard these words from the crowd. Now Cleopas and his friend realized Jesus stayed on the cross because of his love for us and to save us from the punishment of sin. Remember, Jesus came back alive and was seen by many, many of his believers, but his enemies never saw him again. David also wrote, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. In Psalm twenty-two, eighteen, and in John 19, verses 23 and 24, it is recorded that the Roman soldiers who nailed Jesus to the cross had divided Jesus' clothes and gambled to see who would get his coat. That's what casting lots means, is gambling. The Lord Jesus may have reminded them of what David had written in the Psalms. In my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Cleopas might have remembered Jesus' words, I thirst, and that Jesus was giving vinegar to drink. The Lord Jesus must have reminded them that when a lamb was killed and burned on the altar, it was a picture of the Savior dying for, in their place for sin. He reminded them that Isaiah the prophet said how just how God's Son was to die as a lamb. Perhaps Jesus reminded them of Psalm 22, verse 16. They pierced my hand and my feet. That is what happened to him on the cross. Jesus may have reminded them of Isaiah's words, that the Savior was with the rich in his death. Cleopas could have remembered that Joseph, the rich man, had very carefully wrapped Jesus' body in expensive cloth and laid it in his own new tomb. Hundreds of years earlier, Isaiah had written of this in Isaiah 53, 9. It would have been thrilling to hear those words directly from Jesus, but remember, we can hear his words from God's word. Continue to read God's word and memorize it. And remember, if you have asked Jesus to come into your heart and life, Jesus is always with you. He is always there to help and guide you. You can tell your friends about Jesus and what he's done for you. And as you walk and play together, 
Some of your friends may not know Jesus and may not know there's a God who loves them. By now, the three of them were too Emmaus. Jesus acted like he was going to go farther, but they urged him to stay with them because it was near to evening and dark. So he went with them to the house and they prepared a meal, but they still didn't know who he was. As Jesus and his two friends gathered around the table to eat, the Lord Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and began giving it to them. Just at that minute, they knew who he was. We don't know how they knew him, but now they saw what God wanted them to see. Then suddenly Jesus vanished, disappeared right out of their sight. They must have stared at the spot where he was. They didn't understand about Jesus' new body, new resurrection body, where he could be invisible or he could let them see him. Didn't our hearts burn as we walked with him, one of them said. Yes, it surely did, replied the other, while he opened the scriptures to us. They looked at each other, got up, and headed back for Jerusalem. They knew they had to tell the other disciples immediately. Have you ever been so excited about something that you left your food where it was and ran off to share the news with someone? I wonder how long it took them to get back to Jerusalem. When the Lord has done something special for you, you need to tell other people about it because it will help them to know Jesus better as you share the things he has done for you. Cleopas and his friend burst into the room and found the disciples talking. Imagine Cleopas and his friend shouting, Jesus is alive! We have seen him! They told the other disciples all that Jesus had told them. And the other disciples said that Simon Peter had seen Jesus. While they were talking, Jesus suddenly stood right there in the room with them and said, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they were seeing a spirit. And he, Jesus, said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do your doubts arise in your heart? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And he showed them his hands and feet. Continuing in Luke 24, verse 41, it says, And while they were still disbelieving for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it before them. Then Jesus said, While I was here with you, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he went on to help them understand the scriptures. After that, there was great joy in their hearts, for they knew the word of God, the Lord Jesus. Let's say our memory verse again. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1, 1. Notice back in Emmaus that Jesus did not go into the home in Emmaus until he was invited. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Jesus wants to come into your heart and life to guide you to forgive your sins and help you to walk the way that he has the very best plan for your life. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, you can do that while I pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful story that reminds us of what you did on the cross to pay for our sins, as well as the excitement and the joy of the disciples as they learn step by step that you were truly alive and that you truly were the Son of God. If anyone listening has not asked you to forgive their sin, I pray that they will pray now. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sin. I ask you to come into my life and guide me. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that I will get to be with you someday forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.